been asked several times on the channel about how I approach a lesson when a player comes to me. That player can be he or she, by the way. So, <laughs> hope you don't mind if I just call him he. No offence meant. Right, so the player comes to me. The first thing I want to know is what has he got before we even start. So I will set the balls up in this sort of manner, an open table, colours on the spots, reds all over. And on one of my um, videos, you will see that I've done an open table where I've been potting the balls. This time I want my player to pot a few balls, not too worried if he misses, you know, or he has to move the white. At this stage, all I'm looking at is technique. So I want to know how he approaches the table. A mental image is beginning to form already. How does he approach the table? How does he stand? How far is his bridge away from the cue ball? Where is he holding the cue? Is he too, has he got no room here or too much room? Is he right or left eye dominant or central? You know, I will determine that just by looking where the cue is in relation to his eyesight. Then I'll start to look at the cue action itself. Where is gripping the, the cue? How is gripping the cue? As I say, not too worried if he misses. You know, we can look at that later on. Now I get my camera out and I'll put him on video from all sorts of positions. How is he standing? What's the cue action like from the side? From the front? From the back? over the top. I want to know if he's putting unintentional side on the cue ball. I can determine that by looking over the top as he's playing the shot or indeed from in front. Just depends. But I want him to know so that I can show him on video how he does what he does. That's prior to the lesson starting. Then we may all, once the lesson started, we've altered a few things. I can then show him before and after. As I've said on many videos, you know, a player does what he does because it's comfortable for him. That does not mean it is right or correct. Yeah, I might, you might hold the cue here and play a shot from there, but we know we haven't got enough follow through, but you do that because it's comfortable for you. A coach like me comes along, moves your hand here to here, straight away you're out of your comfort zone. Yeah, and it feels uncomfortable. What I don't want to do is give the player a load of information too early, too soon. All that will do is confuse him. So if I've moved his hand back as an example, let him get used to that new position. So important before we move on to the next little bit. Okay? So that's how I approach a lesson when somebody comes to me. Then we will start the nitty gritty of uh, correcting, shall we say, flaws or altering something just to make it a little bit better. When it comes to that nitty gritty, let's look at the straight shot. Now I've just set up a, a simple straight shot here, but the beginner, generally speaking, I have heard the comments so often, oh, I hate straight shots, I hate them, I always miss them. Well. The professional doesn't like straight shots either, but he doesn't like them for a different reason. He knows that that pot is as simple to him. All he's got to do is aim correctly and deliver the cue in a straight line, which he's practiced for years. He doesn't like them simply because all he can do with the white ball is to go straight forward or straight back. That's the only reason he doesn't like that straight shot. The beginner doesn't like them because he's frightened of missing it. He is probably aiming correctly, invariably they do. But what they don't do is deliver that cue where they're aiming. That's why he misses that straight shot. All right, so this is, let's coming back to my lesson, this is one of the things that I will be looking at. Is he hitting the cue ball in the middle? Point one. Is he delivering the cue through the middle? Point two. Is he moving? You know, these are things that will cause him to miss that straight shot. All right? If it comes down to 
distance now, if we've got a big distance between the white and the object ball, different matter altogether, you know, it really examines your technique. Even a, a long blue, even the top players in the world cannot guarantee to pop a long straight blue. Why? Well, minor little differences in their cueing technique. I dispute the fact that they aim differently, invariably they don't. What they do is deliver the cue slightly differently, right? And the margins of error in this game are so small, you know, particularly over a distance. Now the professional or the good player will invariably never miss that pot. It's quite a simple shot for him. The beginner, generally speaking, doesn't deliver the cue accurately. That's why he misses. But coming back to that professional player, that good player, from there, all he can do is go straight forward or straight back. So here he goes straight forward. Here. Or here. He comes straight back. And that's the only reason he doesn't like the shots. Because it limits his positional possibilities. Just enlarging on the theory of a sound cue action and that straight pot. Here I've set up a, a straight black, not much distance between the cue ball and the, and the object ball. And let's be honest, even a beginner wouldn't have much problem in potting that ball. All it is, is delivering the cue in a straight line. Once that distance starts to increase, the shot gets to, to be a little trickier. Still an easy shot for the good player, but the beginner might start to feel a little bit apprehensive. But again, all it is is a question of delivering the cue in a straight line. Now once we start increasing that distance even further, we get to here, this sort of situation, we're about an inch away from the cushion, still not trying to do anything with the cue ball other than pop the ball. Even the professional, you know, whilst he's still expected to pot it, he wouldn't be able to guarantee this shot all the time. The beginner, yeah, again, because of those distances involved, he might start to feel a little bit apprehensive. And that apprehensiveness and the, or that nervousness, that anxiety, can affect the cue action. This is why I place so much importance on it. All right, getting that cue moving, the technique of delivering it in that straight line. So here again, just nice and comfortable on the shot. Get the cue moving, stay still, get the cue moving and deliver it on that straight line. All right, so we've got no real problem, providing we're not trying to do anything with the cue ball. Once we start trying to do something with that cue ball, it starts to get a little trickier. But that's for something else when we move on a little. At the moment, all I'm doing is working with that beginner to get that cue moving in a straight line. So moving on from our straight shot, here we're at the business end of the table. And we call it the business end of the table, generally speaking, because the black is the highest value ball on the table. So it makes sense to, to pot it as often as we can. Also, the reds are generally in this area. We need, you know, pot black, get position on a red. Lastly is the value of this cushion here. We, because the cushion is close to the black, we can come off it and up gain position, black or reds. Now related to um, Eddie Charlton, the great um, Australian champion, it's rumoured that before breakfast, he would get up in the morning and just play around this area. He'd pot a, a few hundred black balls from various positions. Now our beginner here, as I've said, he wouldn't miss that shot, but he needs, still needs to practice in and around this area. So emulating what uh, Eddie Charlton did, we're not concentrating on where the white going, just potting the ball. 
from there. But what I want you to do now is to vary that position. So as you straight shot, let's do a slight little angle from there. One thing I want to emphasize is I don't want you to sacrifice the pot for, to try and play position. At this stage, all we're doing is potting the ball. Positional element will come in later. We're trying to get the, the, the message of cueing straight and learning the angle of the pot. If, if you sacrifice the pot, you know, you get position but miss the pot, your opponent's on the table. There's no, not a damn thing you can do then. You know, you get the pot, even if you haven't got position, at least you're still on the table and you can play safe. All right, so learn to pot first. Here we go again. Just nice, simple shot, pop the black. Okay, again, another ball. Just creating different angles all the time. Here we've got a slight cutback. Even tricky shots for any, but good, even good players. Just make sure you have the, of your pot, nothing else. So important to get the pot. Nearly missed that one myself. Just the pace of the shot allowed it to drop. Here now I'm coming high on the black. trying to do anything with the white just making sure of the pot so important just increasing the angle a little bit more again just concentrate on the pot and what I would urge you to do as well this type of practicing don't just do it from one side of the table both sides of the table, as I said in other videos. If you practice on one side of the table, you will develop a preference for that side of the table. That's not a good idea. You are going to be asked to play shots from both sides of the table. So make sure you practice from both sides. So our beginner has come to me for a lesson. We've started with the open table. I've watched him play a few shots hopefully pot a few balls. I put him on video, how he stands, where he holds the cue, how far the bridge hand is away from the cue ball, the cue action in general, and I will keep that on record. Then I will make a few alterations, possibly or probably, to his technique. Let him practice that for a little while, and then I'll put that on video, and we will analyze the two together at the end of the lesson. We've moved on to the straight shot where we're examining his cue action, delivering that cue in a straight line, concentrating on that and the pot, not worrying about position at all at this stage. We move on to the angle shots, half ball, quarter ball, etc, cutbacks. What I want to emphasize at this, this point is that we learn these angles through trial and error. If we're normally well coordinated, we've got reasonably good eyesight, we will learn those angles through trial and error. We will store them in our memory, right? What I want to emphasize is that although there is an infinite amount of positions that the ball will, will end up in on the table, right? There are only a limited number of angles to to commit to memory, to learn. You will learn those angles and the line of the shot through trial and error and a lot of practice. Good luck with that practice.